what I have here is the K18 smartwatch. And not only does it run full Android KitKat 4.4, but it also has Wi-Fi. So what makes the K18 smartwatch different from all of the other Android Wear smartwatches? Well, Android Wear is basically like a scaled down version of Android that runs a couple of things, usually in cards, so notifications, health tracking, and that sort of stuff, all in a scaled down smartwatch friendly package. What makes this different is that it's running full Android, so we've got Android 4.4.2, running as a complete and full, not scaled down install. It just has a skin that makes it look really, really nice on the smartwatch and the round screen. But other than that, it's full stock Android. Now, what does this mean? Well, it means that it's really, really easy to install apps on the smartwatch. Now, a lot of smartwatches, and there are quite a few with this particular skin of Android, actually come with the Google Play Store installed. Mine, for some reason, didn't, even though it was advertised as having it. And that means that basically you just sign into your Google account and you can just download every single app that works on any Android smartphone. Now, if you're like me and your watch for some reason doesn't have the Google Play Store, it is still quite easy to download APKs through the built-in internet browser. Yes, I did just say internet browser. This watch has Wi-Fi 802.11 BGN, and it has a built-in browser that's optimized for the round screen. It has a little round keyboard that is actually surprisingly responsive. And, you know, I could find myself typing on it. Maybe not for long periods of time, but it works. The Wi-Fi is a little bit slow, as you would expect for a smartwatch, but it gets the job done. Now, most of these watches actually do come with a pre-installed app store. It's called App Store, and it contains about eight apps. Some of them don't work. For example, Facebook crashes every time, and YouTube won't let you run it unless you install Google Play services, which it won't let you install for some reason. Now, on this watch particularly, there is a fairly simple workaround to the missing Play Store, or missing pretty much any other thing that you might want. You can just flash this watch. It comes with a little charging cradle, you plug it into your computer, you can flash it, just like any other Android smartphone. And really, you can just, you know, do whatever you want. Now, one of the APKs that I installed over Wi-Fi is Google Maps. And paired with the built-in GPS, I found that it's pretty accurate. It's kind of funny to, to look at the little, little screen with the map on this tiny, tiny little watch face. But, you know, it gets the job done, and I thought it was pretty cool. One problem that I found with pretty much all of the applications is that if they're not built for the smartwatch like the pre-installed ones are, uh, because the screen is round, they actually get cut off. So for example, um, in Google Maps, the search bar is a little bit cut off. You can still use it, but certain things don't fit on the screen, and that can be annoying, but there are also smartwatches that run this uh, pretty much identical skin that have square displays, so that kind of makes it easier. Now let's talk about the design of the smartwatch. So the casing is anodized aluminum. Mine is in gold because they didn't have the silver one that I wanted. It has a fake leather strap which is fairly comfortable but is pretty obvious that it's fake. Now there's a good reason for them to have a fake and also non-detachable watch strap. And that's because all of the antennas for the Wi-Fi and for the GPS are in the straps. So if you remove those, you'll lose your Wi-Fi, and you'll lose your GPS capabilities. So let's talk a little bit about the specs of the watch. So you already know that it runs Android 4.4.2, but it also has a dual-core processor, half a gigabyte of RAM, four gigabytes of ROM, 
and a 1.4 inch 400 by 400 pixels AMOLED display. Yeah, you heard me. This thing has an AMOLED display. Now that's pretty cool because that's something that you see on high-end smartphones. But to find it on a smartwatch, that is pretty cool. Not to mention, if you have a background like I do, which is mostly black, it really doesn't take a lot of juice to run this screen. Speaking of juice, the battery life on this watch is not fantastic. As you would imagine, running all of those specs, running Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, GPS, Android 4.4, takes a lot of battery power, and this watch doesn't quite have it. I found that it'll usually last me most of the way through the day, but I did have to recharge it before I went to sleep, and that's a bit annoying. One thing you can do to increase the battery life is to turn on power saving mode, which I found was able to get me from the beginning of the day to the end of the day, just barely, scraping by at about 3 or 4%. Now how much does this watch cost? That's actually a bit of a gray area for this thing because there are so many vendors. You can find it on DHgate, AliExpress, Gearbest, or one of those websites for somewhere between $120 and $145. And I should mention that there are also several other versions of smartwatches that run this same exact OS. And usually if you want to get one of these full Android watches, that'll run you from anywhere between $70 and $350 for some of the flagship models. So thanks guys for watching this video, I'll leave a link so that you can buy this thing in the description below, and as usual make sure to follow me on Twitter, at Luke Miani, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe if you want to support my content, and I will see you guys next week.